Hello, Trades Tribe, and welcome to the community. I tell you what, I am excited about this. So first of all, I've had hundreds and hundreds of people reach out to me and ask me about getting into the trades. Ask me about how to do it. They say it's too complicated, it's too hard, they're too confused. So what we've done, man, I'm going to talk to you about it. This is going to be good. So first of all, here's the thing. The reason it's so hard is there's never been a clear path to get into the trades. And what I mean by that is, think about it. When you go to school, when you're in high school and you reach out to your counselors and you say, look, I'm thinking about, the first thing they tell you is, look, if you don't go to college, you are not going to amount to anything. And I got to tell you, that's not true. Uh, first, I know, where is he? I'm in my studio. I know, see, look here. He's cringing right now. How's everybody doing? So here's the thing. First of all, there's never been a clear path. And, and why is that? Because counselors don't know. They've never been in the trades. Counselors don't know because they don't know the opportunities in the trades. And they definitely don't know because I promise you, they have no idea about the opportunities out there. They don't know the things that it takes to get in, to do well, to exceed, to become a foreman, a superintendent anything at all like that. They don't even know some of the positions. I mean, if you talk to them, they literally have no idea. But what I want to tell you about today is right now is the greatest time to get into the trades. And I know that sounds funny, but it's absolutely true. And I'm going to go over some numbers in just a little bit and talk about it and tell you why. But here's the deal. You not only get to get into the trades, but you become part of the community. And what I mean about that is, and don't get me wrong, I give electricians a hard time every other day and HVAC techs and roofers and everybody else. But the cool thing about it, the really neat thing about it is that, look, we're a community. We actually, we do things together. We get to know each other. We like each other. We may talk trash about each other and give each other a really hard time. But the truth is, uh, we do get along. We respect each other. And, and that's part of the big deal. And I'm sorry, I'm looking down. I'm trying to pull some notes up here. Uh, the cool thing about it, though, is building our community, putting people in that community, it's a great time. And I say that because right now there are more unfilled trade jobs in the United States than there's probably ever been before. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you numbers and tell you why and show you what it is about it that makes this the best time ever to get into the trades. And then I'm going to tell you what we've done about it, just so you know. But the cool thing about it is, and I see we have Neil, the Urban Explorer in here. Good to see you. So I'm going to be doing this for the next week to come through and give you different reasons, different opportunities, and tell you about different things about getting into the trade and why it's so good. And I'm going to talk to you, the, the Wolverine 25, what would you recommend getting into? I'm going to talk about that too. But first of all, counselors and administrators cannot give you this information. And, and I feel bad about that because they don't have access to it. And they probably do, but the truth is they don't want to give you that. They literally want to tell people that you need to go to college. And th then they're going to tell you, if you don't, you're never going to amount to anything. Well, the bad thing about that is there's so many opportunities right now for tradespeople, and these opportunities are going to get better in the future if you get in now. And I'm going to point that out here in a minute. But what I want you to think about is, to be honest, getting into the trades right now, and there are hundreds of thousands of unfilled jobs across the nation. Now, think about this. Whether you're in the trades already or you're just now getting in the trades, there's no clear path. Meaning, if you are already in the trades, do you know what you need to do to become a foreman, to become a superintendent, to become a project manager? Do you know? Most people don't. And I'm going to tell you here in a minute why I think I'm the one that can tell you and show you the things that you need to do. I've got over 40 years in the trades. Now, not just plumbing. I started out as a laborer. Then I moved into concrete and flooring. I actually worked for one of the largest companies in the world that build flooring in multi-story office buildings. And that was a great job for me. Later, I got back into plumbing because I got into plumbing actually while I was still in high school. So later, after I worked for this concrete company, I decided that's a lot of work, but I got back into plumbing and I loved it. 
Now, along the way, I've done different things, but I've got over 40 years in the construction industry. And what I want to talk about is how I got in and the things that I learned along the way. And I want you to think about this. If you wanted to become a good fisherman and you just went to the store, bought rods and reels, bought tackle, bought the lures, bought everything you think you need and just went out and just started fishing, do you think you'd be very good at it? And the reason I use that analogy is to me, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show people how to fish because if you hand a man a fish, you can feed him for a day. But if you teach him to fish, you can feed him for the rest of his life. So think about this. If you literally worked with a master plumber, with somebody that's been in the trades with 40 years experience that has moved up, that literally got into the union as a journeyman, moved up to a foreman, moved up to a superintendent, moved up to director of operations for one of the largest mechanical contractors, do you think that that would make it easier? It's like learning to fish. If I don't, if I don't know what to do and I just go out and start trying, I don't know if I'm doing good, don't know if I'm doing bad, don't know what I need to work on, don't know what I need to practice. But if you work with somebody that's been right where you're at, and I'm gonna go back to more about why this is the greatest time ever, <clears throat> But if you go back and look at it and say, what if, what if, because I'll tell you what, when I got into the trades, there was no online education. There was no training program. Now the union was around, but I didn't even know about the union, but I'm going to tell you here in a minute why I think I'm good to teach you about getting into the trades. So first of all, why is now the greatest time ever? with so many open jobs, and I'm gonna tell you how they became open. Right now, we've got hundreds of thousands open trade jobs across the United States. Now, here's part of the reason, is the unions, the training centers, they all slowed down during the pandemic. They quit bringing people in. Some, some of them even actually quit training, but they quit bringing people in. Now, here's the thing, a lot of people that are in the trades, they're old, and they started retiring. And for every 10 people that retire from the trades right now, only four people are getting back into the trades. So that is going to create a bigger supply and demand in the near future. And what's that going to do? That's going to lead to higher wages. Now, the cool thing about that is if you're one of the people that gets into the trades now and sees the opportunity, it can be greatness. Okay. If you get into the trades right now, in four or five years, when the rest of America starts realizing, man, look, there's a big problem here, you're going to be one of those people that are in position to step up and move forward. So that's reason number one, but hundreds of thousands unfilled construction trades right at this moment, not just in residential, but also in commercial. So you've got job openings all across the United States in any aspect of it, meaning commercial, residential service, new construction, union, non-union. There are job openings everywhere around us. Next is the number of job postings are increasing every day. I literally, I look at this stuff because I study it because I want to know what we can do to help people learn to do things better. And you start looking at all these job openings, but you start looking, look, every day I look, there's even more job openings. Less jobs are being filled and it's taking longer to fill them. Now, a lot of these are skilled trades. You're going to need to get some training. But with the right education, with the right training, you can understand not only how to get into the position for the jobs you want, but you can also learn that if you put yourself in the right position, you can let these employers pay for some of this training for you. Now, think about how big that would be to actually be able to get in, have them teach you the things that you need to know to move up and pay for it. Okay. So think about that. You get in, you do a good job. They want to move you to foreman, but you need training on construction management. Maybe you need training on materials, maybe math, whatever it is, you can get training from the actual employers that you work for. Now, how big is that? That would be like going to work for a company and say, look, I want to be a doctor. You walk in the hospital, say, I want to be a doctor. They say, okay, work for us for a little bit. 
and we'll teach you how to be a doctor and we'll help put you in that position. Guys, that's what's going on in the trades right now. Me, I'm a lead AP. You know what? One of the companies that I work for paid for my training, paid for me to take the test for me to get that credential. But it's because I put myself in a good position. I had already been a foreman for them. I'd already been a superintendent for them. And I'd already moved up. So they knew, look, Roger takes this thing seriously. Roger wants to learn. Roger wants to grow. And that's what I want to teach you. What are you doing with your life right now? And are you putting yourself in a position to move up? Are you putting yourself in a position to make more money? Are you putting yourself in a position to take care of your family? Because right now, I'm telling you, there has never been a better time to get into the trades because of the way things are right now. The next thing is the average median rate. How much money can you make? Literally, people getting into the trades right now, the median average hourly rate across the United States is $16 an hour. Now, that's about what it is here in Dallas. I know if you're in New York, if you're in California, probably Chicago, there's a higher rate for just starting out. And when I say $16 an hour, that is for an entry-level helper or apprentice position. Now, some of these things, if you're in the union or if you're with some of the bigger companies that have benefits, it's going to be worth more money. Some of these companies are putting in your pension. Some of them are paying for your insurance. There's a lot of things going on that can actually make that worth more money. So if you're in the union, you know money's being put in your pension. You know your insurance is covered. There's certain things there. Some companies have paid holidays, paid vacation, things that go into your benefits that make this more, uh, more worthwhile. And guys, look, I, I can see the chat. The thing is, I've got a few things here that I want to talk about that I want to go through. I'm only going to be live here for about 15 more minutes. I will try to answer some questions, you know, in the last five minutes or so, if I can. I see we've got uh, Jared Yoder says he's got an interview today with an open shop residential new construction company. Look, I and they gave you an offer on a spot. Jared, drop a comment in there. How much did they offer you? What kind of money did they offer you just to start out? And, and let me ask you this. Because right here, Matt Sassus, Sasse says, uh, just graduated high school, jumping into an apprenticeship. There's plenty of kids in my class and surrounding schools going into the trades. I love that. So the cool thing about this is, I last to set command to does not exist. Guys, look, the, oh, that, that's a not bot. Here I am trying to reply to it. That's funny. Okay, so 30 million jobs in the United States do not require a college degree. And let me tell you what, the trades are the same. Now, if you say, well, if you're going to be a project manager, you have to have a college degree. No, you don't. I know project managers that came up through the trades that literally started out as an apprentice with zero experience at all. You can start there too. You don't have to start by going to trade school, by going to college, anything like that. You can literally, if you know what to do, go out and find a job, $16 an hour. So see, Jared, I nailed it. Just exactly the number that I was talking about. So that's the median average all across the United States. But let me ask you all this. What if you knew the mindset? What if you knew the things to ask? What if you knew the things to say and do every day on the job that puts you in a position to where you were learning how to move up, okay? Because somebody's going to. Somebody's going to move up and be a foreman. Somebody's going to move up and be a superintendent. Somebody's going to move up and be a journeyman. Somebody's going to go up and be a director of operations. Some people are actually going to move up and own their own company. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of position do you want to put yourself in? Because here's the deal. I don't want to teach you how to be a plumber. I don't want to teach you to be an electrician. I don't even want to teach you to be an HVAC tech or anything. Here's what I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to put yourself in a position to get the best jobs out there. Okay? And these are things that I learned. I came into the union as a journeyman and moved up to foreman, to superintendent, all the way up to director of operations for one of the mechanical contractors. How did I do it? Well, we'll talk about that more in a minute. So shortages in the workers 
push wages higher. So think about that. I'm telling you about the shortages right now. There are literally hundreds of thousands of unfilled jobs all across the United States. Here's the thing about that. Look around in the world that you live in. Tradespeople build the houses, hotels, apartments, roads, bridges, whatever it is, anything you look around and see, tradespeople built that. And guess what? Tradespeople are also going to repair it. So there is not going to be any better time than right now to get started in the trades because five years from now, when the wages start going up and everybody really wants to do it, you're going to be in a position, if you do things right, to be a foreman, to be a superintendent, to eventually own your own company one day. If there's anybody in here who wants to open their own company, just put a note in here right now and say yes, because the trades are the easiest way to get out, learn a career, learn a profession, and put yourself in a position to where you can work for yourself one day. <clears throat> I'm in trade school now and I'm getting an electrician assistant certification and HVAC technician certification. By the way, I'm a big fan of yours, man. Good energy. Thank you very much. So see, we got people in here that want to be entrepreneurs. And I got to tell you, until I became one, I didn't realize how much I wish I would have known. And I had already learned the things to become a foreman, to become a superintendent, to do things like that. So back to my notes. Unions and training programs slowed down during the pandemic. Okay, I think we all know that. I had a lot of people on my lives. I normally go live just every Monday, but for the next seven days, I want to get in here and teach people the things that they need to know to help them. The big thing right now is to understand that if you're not in the trades, if you've got a job you don't like, maybe you're unemployed, maybe you're just graduating high school or even college. There's a lot of jobs out there that, that are unfilled that, you know what, as a college graduate, you're going to get an entry level position. What if I told you you can get an entry level position in the trades, learn the trades, and then by the time you get your journeyman or your master's or something like that, you're going to be in a position to really do well especially with a college degree, because now somebody's going to look at you and say, hey, you know what? We can make him a project manager. We can teach him to do things like that. Uh, $23 an hour, second year plumbing apprentice, commercial service. Guys, the opportunity is out there. I like this. Jared says, Roger, I did so good because of your interviews, because of your videos. I did so good in his interview because of my videos. Jared, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sure I get through all my notes, brother. So positions that typically, yeah, let me start that one again. Positions that typically pay good money require technical knowledge and significant training, and you can get employers to pay for that training. So I got about five more minutes here. What I want to talk about is, look, you've got to have a good training. You've got to have a good skill. You've got to have good knowledge to make a good living. And this is the best time ever because with hundreds of thousands unfilled jobs all across the United States, what's going on right now is fixing the lead to supply and demand. We have actually been telling students for the last several years, if you don't go to college, you're never going to amount to anything. And the truth is that's so far from the truth. I can tell you about hundreds of trades owners that own their own companies and are multimillionaires. I can tell you about trades people that I know that are actually on their tools every day that make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I know trade, I know plumbers in the Dallas area that make over $200,000 a year. What do you want to do with your life? And are you getting the training to put you in a position to get to the right job you want? And look, some people just are like, look, I just, I just want to be a plumber. That's it. I don't want to be a boss. I don't want to be a foreman. I don't want to be a superintendent. I don't want to make that extra money. But if you learn how to do things right, if you get in and you learn how to interview well, how to study, what to study, what to look at, you can put yourself in a position 
to where you get the opportunities that only other people have been getting. Because I tell you, opportunities don't go away. They just go to somebody else. And with everything going on in the trades right now, and look, this is an amazing community. I've been reaching out to other trades people all across the United States, asking them questions. Hey, what do you see being the biggest problem? What do you see being the biggest problem? What was the biggest problem for you? And I got to tell you, we, we've all got different issues. Okay. Every one of us do. But you have the opportunity right now because of such a supply and demand. And over the next few years, it's even going to get bigger. So if you get into the trades now and you get in the right way, you're literally going to be able to do very, very well. And I want to jump in here real quick. Uh, colleges for suckers. Uh, Leah says, so true. Uh, Seth Bach Hack says he wants to go to the union, $50 an hour, journeyman wage. Uh, Seth, where are you at? Uh, college graduates pay for their debts for years and won't get a house. And, and look, a lot of college graduates do get a house, so I'm not going to say they won't get a house. But the opportunity, look, the opportunity is right now, guys. Say that again, opportunities don't go away. They go to someone else. That is so true. Uh, Sully, Scully's House of Thrillers is in here. Good to see you. Uh, Daniel Jager says, my problem with plumbing is I bite my nails. Trust me, you'll learn to quit. Uh, Ronald Cry says, uh, my network is bad. I'm just trying to get, but it's not going to a guy from Africa, Ontario, Canada in the house. Good to see you. Uh, Roger, do you have a sky hook? I, I don't. And I teach people about those too. Breeze Comics says, Roger, you inspired me to become a plumber. Guys, here's the deal. We, we, we can all get in the trades. We can all do well. We can all make a great living. The thing that I'm putting together is I'm teaching people how to not just get in the trades, but become the best person you can be to get offered the jobs, foreman, superintendent, project manager. What do you want to what do you want to grow up to be? What do you want to move up to? And what kind of life do you want? Because right now, if you're unemployed, right now, if you're just graduating and you're thinking, man, I'm not going to be able to get a job, you're wrong. The opportunity is the greatest it's ever been right now because of the shortage of people in the trades. So I just want to tell you that Getting into the trades right now could be the smartest decision you ever make. And like I said, some people just literally want to get into the trades. They just want to be a plumber, just want to be an electrician, just want to be a roofer, whatever it is. And, and that's fine. But if you want to be the very best, if you want to learn how to impress your employers, how to be the one they reach out to when it comes time to promote somebody, how to be the one that when they look at you, they think, you know what? I need to pay that guy more money. That's the kind of things that I want to talk to you about. Now, I'm going to be here for the next seven days. Uh, and, and you're right. I'm also talking at Vid Summer, Vid Summit this year. Uh, asked my apprentice for a copper magnet. That's funny. Uh, no, it's not worth it. A college isn't worth it. Is schooling worth it? $11,000 for CAD? <clears throat> You know, there's nothing wrong with CAD, but it's also something that I'm not sure that I would want to. I wouldn't want to sit in an office all day, but some people do. And if you learn things right, I can actually tell you about an apprentice I had that wanted to learn CAD and actually talked to him about it and told him how to do it. He went and paid for his own training. Now the guy makes bank and runs the entire CAD department. Uh, Logic Pro X Gaming says, thank you for making your video so descriptive as a blind homeowner can follow them and fix my own stuff. Look, brother, I love that. That is fantastic. Uh, have any questions? Uh, hello from a Danish plumber. And the Wolverine 25 says, I do CAD. So man, if you learn a trade, really doesn't matter which one, and you market yourself right to your employers or other employers in your neighborhood, you can talk to them and do really, really well. Uh, okay, guys, 427, I got to get out of here. I am fixing to jump over onto LinkedIn and pretty much talk about it all again. Guys, thank you very much. I do appreciate you being here, and I'll be here for the next seven days. So if there's anything you want to learn about, hopefully I'm going to cover it in the next seven days.
I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed. And y'all see the banner on the bottom? Go to thetradesacademy.com. Check it out.